You know, the good thing about this panel is we go from, um, you know, uh, colleagues into the parliament, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to ambassadors, to central bankers, and then to scientists. So let me also, our fourth speaker, Ernesto Demiani, is a professor at Khalifa University for the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. He's also the director of Center for Cyber Systems. He, he will be, um, his remarks, uh, the opening remarks will be about trust and governance issues of multi-regional uh, de deployment of AI. Please, Ernest. Oh, thank you very much. I, had, uh, I was the only one, apparently, who had taken the opportunity that was given to us to, pr to present a couple of slides. I don't know if there are, they are available or not. I will just try to press this button to see whether this is the case. But if not, I'm, uh, I can Okay, here they are. So basically, uh, I really listened with a lot of interest to what was said before me. And uh, as uh, you said, I'm not an economist and I'm not, uh, but I'm very much interested, of course, in the economy of uh, the processes, especially the processes, large-scale processes and the regional processes in terms of, uh, you know, large-scale supply chains business processes that involve multiple countries. And I'm interested from the point of view of the underlying technology. And so I would like just to add a few words on what could be the day after of, you know, uh, a deglobalization that is taking place. And there are two, two words that I want to say before starting to show you a couple of slides. And the two words are words that are very fashionable in Europe, uh, and uh, I also heard them in the region here a lot. One is decoupling, and the second one is de-risking. So what is decoupling from the point of view of technology? Introducing redundancy. So if a part of a process is not feasible due to some conditions that happen, for example, a supplier is no longer available, and then you want to, to have a second sourcing, right? So you need to have this second alternative part of business processes. And this is called decoupling. You are introducing means, of course, you are, uh, in a sense, uh, paying more. You, the, you, you won't be at an optimal solution just because you want to decouple. You want to be able to cut out some parts if this uh, is needed. And the second is de-risking. So the fact that I wanted to put risk as a first-class citizen in my decisions. And these are decisions that, from the technology point of view, are decisions that are about business processes and supply chains. So uh, this is what I wanted. Very interesting picture that we have in front of us of, uh, you know, deglobalization and uh, arising, uh, you know, areas of conflict. And of course, this the impact is that we have a technology platform that needs to handle decoupling and de-risking. These are the two words. So, in a sense, the problem is that we, our platforms, we run them based on data. So supply chains are optimized every day. Cargo shipments are optimized every day. Regional, uh, of course, processes are, and inter-regional processes are particularly important in this region. We are in a place which is the hub the hub between the East and the West. So I don't want now to enter into this from the point of view of the economist or the politician, because it's really not my bailiway. But from the point of view of the technologies, this makes a very fascinating place. On the other hand, the problem is that normally we have to optimize jointly, meaning that we have to solve jointly some problems of optimization to run global airlines, to run global cargo, to run the uh, business processes. And in order to do that, the big problem is that, uh, uh, the, the notion is that we must have some joint strategy. The actors that will take decision together need to be able to basically trust each other enough to do joint optimization of large scale regional and inter-regional processes. So uh, my problem is that uh, we have all, most of the tools of the technology tools we give to decision makers are based on this assumption they will trust each other enough to make a joint decision because this is a, a major uh, a major part of any of any so in a sense well I, I i being a scientist well you see i have a nice picture this is called the pareto frontier pareto was a uh, you know so the, in the decision making you you tend to find uh, those points which basically will be a sort of a compromise so everyone can agree on them with a minimum of, of, of damage or a minimum of penalty. 
the problem is that in order to do that, you must know, have a joint knowledge of the data, of the information uh, that you are jointly taking a decision on. And the problem is that in this situation, we, we are uh, less likely to be able to do that. The worsening, the worst part, and now let me inject a bit of AI. I hope I'm not boring you too much. The worst part is that most of the optimization decisions today are taken by systems. Humans have a role in starting, have a role in sharing the information, but then the notion, for example, of optimization, supply chain, we did a master class here in the, at Khalifa University together with a number of European universities on the pharma supply chain at the time of COVID. So basically you need to optimize the pharma supply chain to be able to, uh, for example, to do the vaccination rates that are needed for the population. And this is something that you can do if you uh, uh, basically tell each other uh, what are the, uh, the sizes of the warehouse, what are the availability of the, of the uh, instruments. So the problem is that these days optimization are done using systems and they are do done using systems that are a little bit difficult to, to open and identify. I know there has been a session in this conference specifically on this topic in the, in the previous uh, days and uh, by a colleague uh, of uh, uh, Khalifa, and I want to underline this notion. We are accustomed to optimize, trusting each other, putting the data in a box, and then running a sort of a, you know, uh, the, the, the algorithm and getting out for a solution that will bind us all but the problem is that the data may, or the information, the trust level may be decreasing much in this region specifically in the near future. So the big uh, uh, processes may be, in a sense, less easy to optimize. So there is a problem eh, of failure happens. And we may be seeing in the future our models, we do run simulation models, of course, of this. And our models say that we may see low accuracy of the joint models we may see fast model degradation, so a number of assumptions that led joint running of processes may be sort of show uh, that uh, lower performance in the, in, the next, uh, in the next future, and the mutual trust, mutual trust will become scarce. So, scarcer then. So this is what, from the technology point of view, I wanted to highlight. This is not just political, this is also uh, technological because of the technology platforms, and this has been discovered in Europe for the, with the Ukraine war, and with the push for the risking and the decoupling, the supply processes that involve certain countries. So this is something that, again, uh, I would like to highlight uh, to you here. So uh, let me just, uh, let me just uh, uh, skip all this part, because I had a sort of a tried to, and I want, let me just arrive to this discussion point. We were trying to do a second digital revolution that was deploying large-scale joint optimization, artificial intelligence especially, across markets. We were trying to do it in this region specifically. We're still trying to do it. Uh, it's similar to the introduction of the internet in the 90s, but the, in the sense for how pervasive it is. The problem is that the introduction of the internet was done in a moment in which there was a globalization type of uh, trend, everybody was trusting each other or could pretend to trust each other. The deployment of uh, um, AI and the joint optimization of large-scale processes need to take place in a situation in which there is not enough trust. So we need to find another way to, uh, to take joint decisions in order uh, to uh, handle this limited trust that we have. Uh, of course, technically I could show you how optimization in a non-trustworthy environment could take place. But I just wanted for the moment to highlight this, this thing. It will be the day after, because whatever the, 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 uh, the future brings, certainly the globalization in a mutual trust environment is going to be, uh, I believe, a memory <laughs> of the past. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ernesto. We in economics, we did borrow so much from science, and most of the terminologies you have said, we use them in economics, but I hope we use them the right way. De-risking with correspondent banking. So this is the way we have been using it, but in science, it's being used differently. Our